everyone. Today I decided to come back into the forest behind my house because I'm going to be doing a camp. As some of you know, there's a little stream that runs pretty close to my property. So I just got everything into the toboggan and we're going to do a little camp out here before winter's over. I'm pretty sure it's going to snow more, but today is 45 degrees and everything is melting. At least it's only 45. It's melting pretty gradually. I don't think there's going to be any flooding. The water waves are probably just going to go up slightly. Later this week, I expect all of our snow to melt. It's going to be in the 50s for a couple days and some rain. So that could mean some flooding later on in the week. We will see. Hopefully it snows again. Well, today I brought everything out. We're going to do a little camp. Also tonight is going to be like 18 degrees, so everything here you see melting is going to flash freeze again, and it will be pretty chilly. So, here's what I have in the toboggan for tonight. Um, got my lighter, camera lights, toothpaste, toothbrush, hand warmers, although I usually don't use those unless it's bitterly cold. Right here I have a tent. I haven't yet tried that. I just bought that. That's a hot tent. So we can have the stove right inside it. I also haven't tried the stove yet either. I bought this like two months ago and I've been really wanting to try it. But all my recent camping videos, I've been doing it in extreme cold. And I don't think this firebox is big enough to go through the entire night and actually keep me warm. So I've been using that cast iron stove for most of my videos. Which, when you're pulling a toboggan, the heavier stove really doesn't matter. I think it's far more worth it. But this one isn't going to rust. This must have fallen off when we were bringing it out here. You saw how I had to really watch when I was going down hills with this. Tonight we're just going to have some MREs. Maybe heated up on the little tiny frying pan I brought out. Certain components of it anyways. I always buy packages of these things. They're great for camping. They're great to keep in your vehicle in case of an emergency. And they're also fun to eat. So circulate them every now and then the cheapest ones you can buy are called humanitarian ones and those they're really not bad at all and you can get those pretty cheaply on amazon or ebay for like 40 dollars a case usually there's 10 in a case and this is a lithuanian mre sometimes the foreign ones are also pretty good i've been holding on to that green bag one for like five years but they have a really long shelf life these things are usually still good after like 10 so I spent about an hour. I split a bunch of firewood that's been seasoning for like three years. All right, everyone, I'm going to do this for a while longer, get some really small kindling to get the fire going. This stuff has been seasoning for three years, so it's very dry. It's going to burn very, very well. I just found one of the guys who's killing my trees. Look at that. That's what's underneath the bark. Eating and destroying. Now we have another kind of thing that goes deep into the wood. This guy just seems to go on the underside of the bark. But over here, I believe that's the longhorn beetle. This stuff is very dry. All I have to do is find some birch bark and that should get the little stuff going, the bigger stuff. And then we're going to have to go out and find our own firewood because I'm sure we'll burn through this before the night's over. And I'm not going to walk back to the house. I plan on staying out here the entire night. I'm going to go up a little bit more. We just met up with the little trickling stream. You see it's kind of frozen over, but we're going to find a nice open spot and we're going to set the tent up right over the little trickling stream. So now I've been walking a little bit. You can hear traffic is very faint as we walk further away from the highway. And 
so far I've only been walking like 10 minutes, but I want to walk maybe three quarters of a mile away from the house. Right here is some bedding, a tarp for underneath, and I will make one more toboggan run before the night's over just to get my mattress. That's the only thing I didn't bring on this trip. Although I really should have. I could have put the mattress on top of it with bungee cords. It would have actually held some of this together a lot better. This is where I'm going to set the tent up. I think this will be really fun. It's not warm enough out for this thing to flood. It may slightly rise, but that's about it. That is really cool. You see the air bubbles moving underneath there? I wonder how thick the ice is. It's been pretty cold out, but there's been a thaw the last couple days. Yeah, we'll definitely be able to break this later on so we can actually use this for washing up. That'll be fun to have this inside the tent. All right, right here we got our tent pole. The good thing about these TP tents is they only have one pole, meaning they're extremely light. So you can go backpacking with them. All this unnecessary plastic when it was already in a package. I gotta say, it's awesome setting it up with snow because you can jam the pole into it. It's a little more difficult without that. It's not gonna be a fun night, it's very windy. All right, everyone, we got it set up. Those TP tents are very easy to set up. Just have the one pole in the middle and just gotta tack it down on the sides. Now it comes with a bunch of stabilizing lines in case you wanted to put more. That's so it, you could put tension on it, won't flap around as much in the wind. It is pretty windy out, but it doesn't seem to be that bad down in this little stream valley that I walked into. So for now, we're not gonna use those unless it gets very windy. So I like the way I set this thing up. With these tents, you always feel like you're gonna fall over onto them because see, you have to be here, but you gotta reach all the way over here to get the zipper going. But once you unzip it when you buy it, you shouldn't really have to zip it back up unless you're inside. So we'll go inside, pretty spacious to accommodate the terrain. You see, that one stake is not in, but that's okay. I learned the hard way. That's okay, but if it was on this side, that is not okay, because it cannot sag on the side where the chimney is, because if this touches the chimney, you're gonna burn a hole right in it, because only this part is fireproof. So our little wood stove is gonna go right here. And my bed will probably go right here. I thought this was pretty cool that we had the stream inside here with us. I could definitely take the hammer and break a little hole in there later. But isn't that cool to see the air bubbles going by underneath there? Now, because it's warm out, this stream may by morning. There might be a trickle on top of the ice. But I am very used to this stream. I know how it acts with different temperatures since it's very close to my property and 
Yeah, if it was raining today with the melting, then yeah, I probably wouldn't want to be here. But even in that case, I still don't think it would get out of here into the tent. I've only seen this thing flood majorly once. And it's not it, that was not enough to wash you away. It might be enough to make the tent collapse on you, but never a dangerous level. Now, if we ever do this tent in the summertime, you see it actually opens up into a canopy. Then you could have like a fire outside it. You just sit in there watching it. Good for a nice rainy day. So now we gotta reach way over here again and open up the chimney. It's got some Velcro and a zipper. And now we're just gonna wind this thing up just like that. All right, everyone, now that I'm inside, I'm gonna keep walking around in here, you know, doing things. The snow is gonna be packed down in no time. So here's the stove. Here's how this thing works. Underneath it, we have these feet. Gotta open them up. Put it down right below the hole. As soon as I start using this, it'll melt around the entire area. Then we can fix it a little bit better. So this stove has this removable cap, so you can put a frying pan on there and it cooks faster with direct flames. I brought a tiny little pan today that I don't even think can go over that, so we'll just leave this thing on. And you can still cook on that, it just isn't as hot. I like how the stove has these side areas where you can put food off to the side, it's still close enough to keep warm. And look at this, this looks like one of those clips you use to put papers together. Came with a nice little glass window. That's wrapped up separate. You got to put that in there with the little bolts. This right here is the little poker stick. Can also be used for getting this off the top when it's scalding hot. Here's the pipes it comes with. If you have a hot tent or a camping situation where you need 90s, you can order those. Because this is a unusual sized pipe. You can't just go to the hardware store and get pipes for it. Although you definitely could manipulate some of them like I've done in the past. Here's the top, the chimney cap. Alright, I'm noticing something right off the bat. Are you no noticing it yet? There is no damper on the pipe like the other wood stove. And at the same time, I do not see anywhere to regulate the air going in. So you can't really control the burn of this one, can you? Except for opening the door, cracking it and stuff. This feature right here is kind of cool because with the poker stick, you can poke the fire. And if you were running this thing nonstop in the winter for days or weeks at a time, instead of having to shovel out ash... You just shake it through this with the poker stick. Take this out, dump your embers outside. Well, actually it wouldn't be embers. You'd be getting rid of just literal ash that's no longer going to burn. That's a very cool feature about this stove, but I do not see any way to regulate airflow. I do not. It, Cause you see this right here is the air intake. But there's absolutely no adjustment. Air comes in right here. And then it's distributed through all these tiny little holes along the top right there. Now, again, I can definitely manipulate this. You see on the back here? All I have to do is get a piece of sheet metal with similar holes. Two screws where I could slide it back and forth. Or I could simply block this with something. Maybe I could, the simplest thing would be just take a piece of sheet metal with one screw so you could just back and forth. But we'll see how it goes tonight from the factory. If there's any kind of issue, I will definitely correct it for our next camp. Alrighty, it's time to start putting the pipes on. And check this out. Most camping stoves, the pipes go in like this. Now that's against building code in a house, but it doesn't matter when you're camping. This one actually goes this way, which is a good thing because if you're burning wet, nasty wood, 
creosote's going to build up and it can drip back into the fire instead of dribbling out of the joints. That's awesome. My other stoves aren't like that. Nice. Yep, we got to move the stove a little bit. My concern with this is, just like my last hot tent, it doesn't come up very far from it. So if this thing shoots sparks, they're going to come down and make little holes all over the tent. They're not hot enough to make a fire happen, like burn us down. But they will make little holes, and over time, more and more holes is going to lead to a lot of heat loss. So what I'm thinking is, I have a similar hot tent stove that I haven't tried out yet. I think I'm going to go back and steal some of its pipes because by chance it might fit like two more sections that might be good it'll give us better drafting of the fireplace and it will also give it a little bit more time for the sparks to cool down before they would come down and hit all right coming back it's only about a 10 minute walk back out here i brought some extra pipes like i said they're not the same thing. These are obviously a lot thinner. It's more a lighter stove, but maybe by chance it'll fit. Other than the joint not perfectly going together tight, it works. It works. You know, after a few weeks of it being really bitterly cold, this 45 degree weather, it feels really warm. We have some birch bark right here. There. That should be enough to start our fire just a little bit. Here's the miniature dam, like a 10 minute walk downstream. The stream gets a lot bigger down here, as you can see. It collects a lot of groundwater fast. Down here, you can see all the discharges on the little dam froze up, so it went right over the top. All right, everyone, we got everything neatly inside. The wind is slowly picking up, but it's not that bad yet. If it gets worse, I'll put up more of the little cable lines it has. Now, you can just tie them to a tree, or if, you, if you're in an open field or a desert doing the same thing, you could just stake them with the things it came with. But when you have a tree, I'd rather do that. So this cable right here is just tightening this up so it doesn't touch the pipe. And I've only been out in the woods here for maybe about an hour or so, and I feel like the water is slowly picking up. It is definitely picking up because stuff is melting. Hopefully by morning we'll have a good trickle going through here. All right, let me show you what we got going on inside. So I put my bed right here so I can be right next to the fire. Just got to tuck the tarp down away from the firebox. I'm doing it like this because last time I did it, it worked out very nicely. I can just put my feet right here in front of the fire and sit on my bed. Cooking here all night. This kindling looks so good. That looks like the stuff you buy in the store. I did that so perfectly. Smaller stuff, bigger stuff. I like this. My head is going to be right above the stream. Hopefully a coyote doesn't come in here at night. A coyote is very unlikely to go near a person when they smell them. But we do have a lot of them in the woods here. I hear them almost every single night howling. There's always packs of them howling in the winter. See this? We got some vents right there for air to come in and out. These tiny little stoves, it's always more difficult to run them. You gotta cut the wood a lot smaller, tend to it more often, and I'm not confident this will go very long throughout the night. I don't think this would keep me warm throughout the night unless I got up like every two hours to throw more in. Smaller firebox doesn't hold as many hot coals. I'm using this tiny little frying pan right here. That'll be used to heat up the entrees that come in the MREs. And the pan's not big enough, so we'll just keep it right on top without removing this. Let's start up a little fire. Start off with the birch bark. You see, you can peel it apart 
make it even thinner when this thin stuff really catches on fire fast. Put a good amount of that into the stove. Once it gets going, this is going to burn extremely hot. Put a couple pieces of cardboard in there. Go ahead and grab some small kindling. Time to grab my lighter. I always love these little blowtorch lighters. They're awesome because they don't blow out in the wind if you're outside. Get it right onto that birch bark. There we go. My wood is so dry I just lit the end of that wood and the wood is burning on its own like a match. We are starting to finally take off. Tent's flapping around a bit. Just for a minute, let's look inside before this gets too hot to look. Still has a lot to do. I just want to peek outside at the smokestack. Not as much smoke coming out as I expected. After only about eight minutes after lighting it, it has now started burning very hot. It's about time to start putting more wood in there. Also, in only eight minutes, look at the exhaust pipe. No more beautiful chrome. It's time to throw some larger wood in. These little camping stoves, they get hot enough to cook on after just a couple minutes. We can already cook on this if we wanted. I just want a little bit, bit of heat in here because now that I'm not outside working, just sitting around, it's kind of chilly out. I thought a stainless steel stove was going to look marvelous for a long time. I guess not. All right, everyone. I am actually getting a little bit hungry, so we're going to start off with this. American military MRE right here. This one is beef strips in savory tomato based sauce. Based sauce. So it's based on the tomato or is it not actually tomato? All right, we're gonna open this thing up right now and we're gonna see what we got inside it. These things are very tough. I think I'm gonna have to grab a knife. No, never mind. Here we go inside, double packaged. Let's see what this one comes with. MREs always come with different variations of stuff, sometimes more than others. So this right here is beef strips in savory tomato sauce. All right. And the next thing we have, garlic mashed potatoes. That's gonna be good, mashed potatoes. We can heat that up in the pot. We can heat these up one at a time. We have a spoon 
it came with sugar-free cranberry grape beverage. That is napkins, a moist towelette. We have gum, salt, and what else do we have in here? This is cranberries. All right, so what else do we have in here? We have peanut butter, which means it probably comes with crackers. Is this a cookie or something? No, it comes with wheat snack bread. So the peanut butter is probably intended for this. We could probably cut it in half and make like half a peanut butter sandwich. Right here is Irish cream instant powder. Cappuccino. So this is basically coffee, right? Allow water that was just chemically purified to stand 30 minutes. You can put hot or cold water in this. That's really cool. We will save this for breakfast. Next we have jam. So look, we can have a peanut butter and jam sandwich. This right here is the heating element. So we can heat up our meals. So the way this thing works, it's actually really cool with an MRE. This thing in here reacts to water. You pour water in here up to the line if you overfill it, it literally won't work. You'll like kind of flood it. I've done that before. So you put the water in there right between these two lines. You slide the sleeve of your food in there. Like I'm going to probably put this in there. And I'm going to heat the other one in the stove. I really want to use that pot and pan. Or I just have a pan. So one of these we're going to put in here. Usually you put one on each side of it and they react pretty good. In my experience, I've opened so many MREs on my other food opening channel and to be honest the american mres usually perform the worst when it comes to the heating element while other foreign ones usually are extremely hot i was told by someone that uh you can't buy the M american mres when they're brand new usually they sell them to the public when they're a few years old and they think that's why but that's really no excuse i've bought MREs from the 90s and they still work perfectly fine. So I'm going to put one of these in here just so I can show you how we use the heating element. And I think the mashed potatoes, no, I'd mashed potatoes, I think I'd rather heat this up on the stove, honestly. Yeah, that'll work a lot better. The handle on this pot is too heavy. It's a nice pot. See, it's copper and the handle looks like it's brass. I found that somewhere. I'm not sure where. So we're going to open up the beef strips. Open it up. Put it into our little pan. Alright. We put that up on the stove. I'm going to have to consistently stir this. Because I think it will burn actually pretty fast. The stove is very hot. Tonight would have been a good night to have soup. I think this is literally going to be hot enough to eat in like three minutes or so. I'm just going to keep on stirring it. All right, everyone, I've been stirring it for only a couple minutes, and the sauce really loosened up. I think it was kind of stiff because it was so cold out. I'm going to give this a taste test. I don't know if the meat actually cooked through yet or warmed up. It warmed up, but it's not hot. It'll be hot in a minute. Honestly, this whole thing is kind of hot, so... I think we just got to wait for that to evenly distribute. And that whole thing, it, this stove warmed it up in less than five minutes. That's amazing. Yep, first spark burned a hole through the tent. And amazingly, it burned it all the way down there. That means that spark stayed hot for a good six, seven feet of travel. They usually don't do it like that. Now look at the stove pipe. Can you see that? It's like a weird purple color. It's like that, that kitchenware that people really like that they sell at the store. You know that like purple rainbow looking kitchenware?
that's really good i'm going to show you guys how we're going to use the heater right now so we're going to tear the top of this thing off and it's so vacuum tight i can't even wow look i did actually rip it it's just so tight there we go get some water and you can use any water it's not touching your food i could have grabbed it from the stream but it's not flowing at the moment i have to break the ice so be very careful not to overfill it does not take a lot yeah look at that, that little tiny bit i just put in there almost overfilled it i got it right around that top line put the food in there put it over like this and you go and just leave it somewhere off to the side so it can heat up Very good. All right, now let's try our drink mix. We're gonna have some grape flavored beverage. Let's see how good that actually is. Or is it gonna taste fake? Wow, this, these caps are horrible these days. All right. It smells really awesome. It's, it's way better than I expected. Not bad at all. Now it's time to make myself a sandwich. Here's the bread it came with. I'm gonna cut that in half so I can have a little sandwich. I'm hoping just compromising the end. Yep, let me tear into it. There we go, that worked. And the plastic did not get on the food, it just compromised, there's aluminum in there. Remember, it's not that warm out, so it's very hard to squeeze this out. very thick there we go yeah let's have a thick peanut butter sandwich we don't need to eat the rest of this separately yummy I don't even really want to make a sandwich I just want to eat it like this and I'll just have the other piece with jam I'd rather do that since it's starting to fall apart Yeah, bread is really dense. I like it a lot. Tasty. It's time to try the jelly. Jelly already smells real good. Look at that. Look at it come out of there. Grape jelly. It's a good thing bears are not out of hibernation yet. But it's getting warmer there, it's just a matter of time. All right, everyone, now it's time to open peppermint candy rings, and this actually had a good way of opening it. They're lifesavers. It actually says lifesaver on them. I'll have those last. I'm just waiting for my mashed potatoes to heat up. Yeah, these things don't work that well. I've had ones that can actually burn you. This has been going for like 10 minutes. It's just lukewarm. I feel it doing something, but I honestly might just end up eating it cold because of that. I'm going to have the cranberries while I wait. Yeah. 
just was the nutrition facts that I just threw in there. This stove is working way better than my expectations. It's producing a really good amount of heat for that tiny firebox. Time to feed it some more stuff. Keep it going. I made sure that every piece of wood would be able to fit in here. Look at that. That is really cool. I'll just put some snow on top of it. I swear we have lost so much snow just today alone. It's melting fast. So this tent, it's working out pretty good so far. See that? Zero smoke. That's because... Everything I'm burning today, I have seasoned for three years, and it's been kept in a woodshed. It's so dry. Smoke is created when you're burning things with moisture in them. So that is really clean burning. You can see I'm not doing anything really unusual with the stove. The fire isn't even that big in there. Look at this. The side of it has warped a little bit. Other side, it's kind of warped in a little bit from the heat. And the door, very hard to open the door like the hinges have warped. That makes me kind of concerned because I got glass right there. Imagine if that broke in my face. Otherwise, the stove is much warmer than I thought it would be. It's doing a good job heating this tent. It cooks food really fast. I'm surprised. I can't believe that hasn't melted being so close. It did in the last tent I used. So far we have burned two spark holes that I know of. Now you may ask yourself to prevent these sparks. Why don't they have like a metal screen over the end of it? That's because usually when you're camping you're burning kind of not the best wood that you find. And creosote would quickly block that up as it builds up on it. Also soot would build up on it blocking airflow. I'm eating one of those mints, they're good. So now the door has warped where the handle can't really open it. It's warped down here. If I grab the poker, I can easily open it. But I don't like how it's already warping. All right, everyone. It's time to do some dishes. How thick do you think this is gonna be? It sounds like two inches or so. Like if I jumped, I think I could break it. It's gonna be a little more difficult than I thought. Got through. Wow. I gotta be careful, I think. It's hollow. The water's not even up to the ice. All right. Water's not very deep. Only a couple inches. Time to clean off my stuff. Alright, that water's extremely cold. Not a great amount of headroom in here, but that worked out pretty well using the stream.
That is really hydrophobic. I'm still munching on the lifesavers. This has been going for about 30 minutes. It's time to try the mashed potatoes. Get them out of here. Yeah, this is not even that warm. It's like lukewarm in my hands, so when I actually start eating it, I don't think it's going to feel that warm. Better than nothing. Better than eating it cold. That is basically cold in my mouth. Feels warm to my hands because my hands are cold, but it is still cold, though. It's really not bad though. Very garlicky. Also the texture of it. I wonder if this was made from a powdered potatoes. It may have been. All right, everyone, it's only 7 p.m., but I've been in here for about four hours now, and I think I might start cooking more. I'm starting to get hungry again. Now, this stove, I can tell you, I was right, and I did the right thing. This is... Whoa! Mosquito just scared me. Wow. Yeah, this stove here does not produce nearly as much heat as the cast iron one, which is about twice as big. Cast iron retains more heat... And the firebox is much bigger for more coals. This thing does not produce as much heat. Not at all. Can you see that? The pipe literally looks blue now. It's been going really good. No real concerns. I don't see any more spark holes. But then again, you really wouldn't see them until morning when the sunshine's going through them. I heard some coyotes howling out there, but they were pretty far away. They're not going to come near me. All right, so let me shut the light off. Look at this. On a wood stove, you should never be seeing this on the sides. If the sides of a wood stove are glowing, it means it is overheating. But yet, there's really not that much going on in there. It's not that hot. It's not producing that much heat. But that explains why it's warping. I gotta tell you, the cast iron guide gear stove is a lot better than this thing so far. But I guess it's all up to how you're going to be using it. Guide gear also makes a extra large stove, which is almost twice as big as that cast iron one you always see me lugging around. I think that might be a little bit too big to conventionally bring it out into the woods. But... I guess for something stationary, maybe it would work. This is what the tent looks like from about 100 feet away. And here's what the tent looks like from just outside it. Really cool. So I just went for a little walk. I had to grab another bundle of firewood, this time some bigger stuff. Because there's no way we're going to make it through the night with that one bundle. We're burning wood way faster than I thought. And it's because the wood is so dry. It's kind of cool. Look at all the little reflectors. All right, everyone. So it's around 10 p.m. at night. I think pretty soon I'm going to cook up this other MRE. We'll have that. My last MRE, that was like six hours ago. I'm starting to get hungry again in here. I've been basically just laying down in here, watching some YouTube videos. There's actually a pretty good signal out here in the woods. So, right now, we are at about 63 degrees. No, no. That's about 66 degrees. And right now, it's pretty comfy in here. I'm burning this thing extremely hot. These stoves that actually have a window. Watch this. Starting to burn my hand being that close. But the same distance from the side... Not nearly as much heat going through it. 
I think that this thing suddenly started working way better is not necessarily because it's burning hotter. It's because it's finally able to keep, catch up as a small stove. The wind has completely stopped. And without the wind gusting through every little crack in this thing, especially down here, you see it drapes. So there's really not a big opening where the stream is. But still, that thing, that flap opens when wind comes through. Because the temperatures have dropped now below freezing, I don't expect this thing to rise at all. We've now climbed up to around 78 degrees. Yeah, it was definitely a factor of the wind preventing us from heating up earlier. Last time I used the hot tent, if you saw that video, I'd dig out a cavity over two feet deep. The snow was so deep, and that literally kept the wind from coming out underneath the edge. How long do you think that giant piece is going to burn in there? It's only been about 10 minutes and that log is burning beautifully. This thing kind of reminds me of a rocket stove. It has the air intake on the back of it and it's distributing it evenly around the log through little tiny piping. It's awesome. It burns very hot right now. This whole tent is nice and hot. Until the wind blows, this thing keeps it very well and the wind problem can be easily fixed by staking it down a little more. Now that it, we're getting later into the night and the traffic on the highway is almost non-existent, you listen carefully, all you can hear in here is occasional coyotes howling, the crackling of the fire, and when it's this quiet, you can actually hear the stream down there trickling. Crystal clear water there. This is all spring water. You walk up like not too far. The stream is non-existent. It picks up water really fast. Do you hear how violently the flames are moving around in there because of the way the air is coming into it? You open the door. Yeah, door has that issue. You open it, the whole stove suddenly gets quiet because the airflow is actually making noise. We melted a lot. When I first set the stove up, we couldn't even pull out this tray. See all the, all the ash that's falling through? So this thing could run indefinitely. Every now and then you just have to empty out the ash. Yeah, we couldn't even open the drawer at first. We melted probably six inches of snow around it. And when we set it up in like a foot of snow, I wouldn't be surprised by morning if there's bare ground around it. I just discovered a spider friend. Look at that. Right there. Spider friend. I just let him crawl onto my hand. Spiders are nice creatures. I doubt this guy is going to bite unless I mess with it. Just gave him a little ride over there. Alright everyone. It's time to open up the other MRE. And let's see what we got inside this one. I bought this so long ago, I have no idea if I even knew the menu. Alright, so this one comes with a tiny metal stove. You fold this thing up to make this little stove. And somewhere in here, there's going to be fuel tablets. Here they are, fuel tablets. That's a weird looking spoon. At first I was like, is that a spoon that I can eat afterwards? No, I think it's recycled plastic. That's why it looks like that. But there's the fuel tablets. In there it looks like those are lemon hand wipes. Came with matches. A zip tie. But I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm not going to use this heating element. I'm just going to heat it up on the stove right here. Came with some really good crackers. I love the crackers that come in these, or these hard crackers. Now this right here is almonds. Right here is our entree. Not that I'm going to know what this is. 
since I can't read what it says and it's been such a long time. So right here we have stewed pork with rice mash. I wonder how good this is going to be. Ingredients, 47% pork, water, rice 10%, pea fibers, salt, there's onions, carrots. Let's give this a try, cook it up. Now let's open this thing up. It's a Ziploc bag, I really like that. That means I can reuse it for something. This, I'm assuming, is jam. This right here is chocolate. That as actually says chocolate. Here's a mint. That's gum. Ooh, tea. Yeah, we're gonna make some tea. I can pour water into that little frying pan, yeah. And I'll just sip it out of the frying pan. I don't think that's weird. This right here is a citrus drink. I could pour this in to my water bottle, just like I did with that grape drink earlier. And this is sugar for the tea. Let's open this thing up. When you buy food that's in Mylar bags, it lasts forever. That's why MREs are a good thing to have on hand in case of an emergency. It smells really good, just like a tube of toothpaste. I want to curl it to try to get as much of it out of there as possible. Here is a close-up look. All right, so you saw that time lapse of me cooking this thing up. I'm just letting it cool now, it's really hot. Now, it may not look like the best thing, but you can definitely see carrots. There's supposed to be pea fibers, pork, and rice. I kept taste testing it while I was cooking it. This is extremely good. This is really good. All right, I'm gonna enjoy this meal. The pot is a little bit too hot to touch so I'm using a paper towel to grab it. I might even have to let it cool a little more. I heated this up really nicely. You see no more big chunks. It just had to kind of dissolve because it was mixed with a lot of solidified fat. I love the flavor of this a lot. These crackers here, I really like them. They're almost impossible to bite into. They're so hard that they're even a little challenging to snap with your finger. Now, they taste just like pumpernickel bread somehow, which I like. Now we're going to go ahead and try this chocolate. There was two dark chocolate bars in there. Tastes very high quality. That jam was also really good. We're gonna try the tea in just a minute. I'm gonna go back to the stream and clean out my pan. I just realized this was still sitting inside the box for this. That's the heater that was supposed to heat up that meal. Now, remember how I said the foreign ones usually work way better? I bet this will work way better. But I have nothing to cook with it now. I'll just throw that back in the car and maybe sometime I'll use that in place of the other ones. So this, I guess, is to heat up like tea or something in some kind of metal cup you would have as a soldier. Hear that noise? It's snowing outside. I just made a huge mess. So I'm sitting here 
this fire is radiating it. I'm very warm. And I had a chocolate bar here. I don't know if you can tell, not really with the camouflage, but this darker part is chocolate. It melted here, and somehow it got all over my hand, all over my phone without me realizing until I was like, what is this? And thankfully I had this moist towelette. I was able to get the majority of it off of everything. All right, everyone, now I'm going to try cleaning this out. I don't think it's going to be as easy as the last one. The last one was just tomato sauce. This is actual grease, and freezing water and the grease does not mix. So I'm really going to have to scrape on it, I think. Get what I can, and then I will heat it back up on the stove with warm water to clean it. All right, I'm just gonna have to heat some water up on the stove and we'll use the hot water to clean it a little better. Snow kinda helps get it off. You know, when you're out in the woods and you have grease on your hand but you don't have soap, here's something that always gets it off. Grab some silt or mud, scrub it, and it actually binds with the grease, getting it off. Just scrub for a bit, like this. Wash it off. And it's kind of like a natural grease remover. See, it's already starting to steam. See if we can get this off now with warm water. Yeah, it's coming right off. I just took a few minutes and everything came off so easily because it's warm. Now we're going back down here to the stream. This is a coal that I accidentally knocked out of the fireplace and it was too hot to touch. So, this is warm. Get that out, give it a quick rinse. Now with the warm one again, can get off anything residual because I don't have soap or anything on me. Rinse it off one more time. I can still smell the meal on it, but I'm a little short on water. I have one more water bottle, and I really want to make that citrus drink. So this is going to be for our tea right here. Just going to use the stream water. It's very clean, and we're going to boil it. All right, so this is basically powdered orange juice. It's kind of bright like orange soda. What does it taste like? Very bland and tasteless. It kind of reminds me of that orange supplement drink, Tang. Alright, the stream water is boiling. Get our tea bag in there. Grab our sugar. Stir around that sugar. Now let's get that off the stove, let it cool down for a few minutes, and then I'll give it a try. Sitting here eating some almonds. You hear that? It's snowing pretty heavily out there. I'm sitting here eating some olives. It's very hot in here now. We have just surpassed 90 degrees. We've now hit a hundred degrees at my head level. This stove is running really hot now. Let's try that tea. Good. I'm gonna get more water out of the stream that I can make another batch with the same tea bag. Just gonna leave the tea bag there. Let's go down to the stream and get some more water. All 
I just rinsed it out a couple times. There's a little piece of sediment in there, but I don't care. You can see the stove is overheating a little bit. That's why we're managing now to get up to 105 degrees in here. Outside is about 26. It's not going to be a very cold night. Now, I don't know if it overheating like this is going to affect it long term, but this thing is working awesome. Alright, our second cup of tea is done boiling. This is very hot, so I just need to hold it with this. Actually burn myself a little bit. Now, I will use the same tea bag like three, four, five times as long as it still is producing a good amount of flavor. This is probably the strongest mint chewing gum I've ever had. It's like twice the strength of Listerine. It makes your whole nose and nostrils burn when you breathe out. Take a look at how the fire's reacting right now, that it's getting great air circulation from the little piping system. As soon as I open the ash pan to show you what's in there, it's gonna stop acting so violently because I'm gonna ruin the airflow. See? Take a look at the ash. This is everything that's completely burned. Can't burn anymore. That barely filled up. This would take at least a day or so of consistent burning to fill that up where it's worthy of being dumped. Overall, I really like this stove. This is very functional, very nice. And I can even use the sides for drying firewood that might be damp. I'm going to shut the light off. Check this out right now. I don't even think it's burning that hot at the moment, but obviously this thing runs like a rocket stove. Look at the pipe. See that? The pipe is glowing. You can't see it on camera except the bottom section, but to the naked eye, it's glowing right up to like this point. It's amazing the tent isn't melting being that close. This thing's running like a rocket stove amazing and it's not even that hot in here it's like 79 degrees before it was 105 and it wasn't even doing that stuff we have not been outside in a while it's about 12 30 in the morning let's go outside as you can see it's snowing a good amount i'm glad temperatures drop back down good amount of snow look at that a solid coating I'm going to walk around a little bit. I think I actually may, before bed, might have to go get another crate of firewood. Yeah, this thing is melting the snow from going on it. We got a good coating. I don't know how much we're going to pick up. The forecast is a little uncertain. That's kind of close to the tree, the exhaust pipe, especially burning so hot. No, I'm not worried about the tree catching on fire, but it will likely kill that branch. I'm walking back on the trail right now, and I'm going to chop up enough firewood to fill another crate. We already have almost a full crate in there right now, but I plan on cooking another MRE before bed, and probably another for breakfast, so we're going to need to keep that stove running, and we can get rid of some trash on the way out too. So it's about a 20 minute round trip to the house and back. I'm back to camp with another bundle of firewood, and... Now, as a late night snack, it's 1 a.m., I'm going to have this, a humanitarian MRE. They're not bad at all. This is the cheapest kind of MRE you can buy. A pack of 10 of them is $40 online. Now, these do not come with a heating element. They're very inexpensive, so we're going to use the heating element that we didn't use from that Lithuanian MRE in this. Now, these come in different flavors and stuff in different meals but a lot of times you don't really have a way of knowing until you get them in the mail let's rip into this let's see what we got in here rip and do it again these packagings are awesome for camping because they're very difficult for something like a bear to smell it so, 
you open it up. Now something can smell it, but then when you're done, just put it in a sealed container or burn the wrappers. That's for the summertime. We don't have to worry about bears right now. Anything else in the woods is highly unlikely to mess with me, except maybe a mouse coming into the tent at night, and who really cares? All right, let's see what we got. The first thing is crackers. These are not going to be as good as those last pack of crackers, but these ones are way easier to bite into, so that's the plus side. Right here we have lentil stew. Now this is something that I'm going to go ahead and throw in my little frying pan there. And the other entree, I'm going to try that heater right there from the last meal. So the next thing we have here is a shortbread cookie. That's going to be very good. Here's our silverware. We got some sugar packets. There's going to be instant coffee in here. We're going to save that for morning. We can have it with that cappuccino that came out of the other one they always come with nutrition facts to make sure you're not allergic to it or anything in case there's an allergy this right here is frosted toaster pastry it's a pop tart it's always a pop tart when you open these things up sometimes it even there's even a residential um packaging in there they just put it in this mylar bag to make it last longer and here's an oatmeal cookie right here is peanut butter okay, here is jam and the other entree or side what is this we have veggie barley stew so you see you still get a whole bunch of stuff for a very inexpensive mre it just doesn't come with a heating element and it really doesn't need one you can eat this stuff perfectly cold i've done it many times but I'm having fun here in my little camp. I'm going to throw some of this in the stove. This is not greasy like that last one, so this will be very easy to clean out in the stream. And the other one we're going to activate in this other heater, which I bet is going to be very, very powerful. They always are. All right, let's pour the water to the fill line. There we go. Oh my gosh, I knew it. This is one of those awesome MREs. Look, it's already steaming in a matter of 10 seconds. And right here, it's hot enough to burn you. You can't touch it. These foreign heaters always work amazingly. Look at the steam. And right here looks like something that may actually turn color when it is ready. That might be what that is. So you turn over the top of it and you leave it against something. Just lean it against something. That is awesome. That's going to like heat that thing up so hot in like five minutes. So here is the barley stew. We're going to start heating that up, stir it around. And if you have a bigger pot, if you wanted to make it into like more of a soup, you could add some water to that totally. So this stove is actually very fast. That is completely heated. I'm letting it cool now. For some reason, this made it actually smell like pizza in here. So while I was stirring this, I noticed the water bottle I filled that heater with. It was dripping right here. So I quickly grabbed it. And then, because I was quickly grabbing that, my fork wasn't in here good enough. So it flicked food all over me. So I put the water bottle back down without fixing the cap. So it's spilled again, but that's okay. I'm used to sleeping in damp beds. I've done this so many times. First, I'm going to eat this, then I'll get to that. This is so hot, I can't even pick up the bag. This is very good, this stuff here. I even see some pieces of corn in there. So I'm noticing in the condiment bag, it came with salt, pepper, two packs of sugar, a hand wipe, and crushed red pepper. That's awesome. I'm glad I went looking in there for extra stuff. Yeah, this is hot pepper flakes. Awesome. I'm putting some of that on my food. Oh, no, I may have put too much. All right, I'm going to be spicy tonight. That is too hot to touch. And that's what this is for. All 
right, let's have the shortbread cookie now. Let's see how that is. So it's basically like a big sugar cookie. All right, I think it's time to try this thing, which is still very, very hot. This thing has enough power, it would probably cook multiple meals. Be careful not to get burned on it. There we go. Yeah, that thing is too hot to hold more than a few seconds in each hand, which is absolutely perfect. I actually have to put this off to the side for a few minutes to cool. While this thing is still producing a ton of heat. Yeah, I can see the water still boiling in there. In the meantime, while I wait for that thing to cool, which it shouldn't take too long. What do I want to eat next? This is literally a Pop-Tart, and I'm not really in the mood for it, so I'm going to put that off to the side. I honestly don't really like Pop-Tarts. I'm going to have my oatmeal cookie, and then I'll have my peanut butter jelly crackers afterwards. This is my bedtime snack. Look at that, steaming. Now that's the kind of heater you want when you're winter camping and your food is frozen solid. That would thaw that thing out so easily. You see these oatmeal cookies, they're very good quality. They're very thick, very big. All right, everyone, this is cooled down to a good temp. Go ahead, open it up. And now we're gonna try our lentil stew. Got a spoon. And then I'm gonna show you guys up close what it looks like. This looks really good. I see a lot of rice, I see the meat. Not bad at all. If anything, maybe it needs a little of the pepper packet. I'm going to do that. Not bad looking at all. Pour some pepper in there. Mix it around. Peanut butter and strawberry jam, and here's the crackers for them. Right now I'm just chewing some gum, helps clean my teeth. Then I'm going to brush my teeth, wash the toothbrush off in the river, along with my pan. Then I'm going to try to get some sleep. <laughs> All right, everyone, I'm back down to the stream to brush my teeth, and that pan has been down there for over an hour, just softening up in the water. Then I should be able to just scrub that out really quickly with my fingers. I'm basically just using this as a heat sink right now for some extra heat. Alright, it's about 2.30 in the morning. I'm finally going to go and get some sleep. Going to load the firebox back up. It's an incredibly windy night. 
this thing due to its small firebox and it burns really hot but it burns really fast and it has can it has to consistently be reloaded really small firebox burns it very fast there's really no way to turn it down there's no damper to control it so highly unlikely this thing's going to stay hot highly unlikely it'll be able to start going on its own again in the morning so in the morning i'm probably gonna have to kindle another fire with some of this cardboard and some small stuff i got right there All right, everyone, it's about 35 degrees in here, and despite waking up a few times to put things on the fire, it eventually went out to the point where, you see, I put a paper towel in there, tried to get it to combust again because it was a little bit of hot coals. Nope, that thing is completely out, so I need to just grab a little bit of cardboard and a little bit of Try wood, and I don't think there's going to be any problem getting this thing going. Well, it is cold enough that all the snow in here became hard. I'll have to look outside and see how cold we got outside. It was supposed to get down to 18 last night, but what is our real temperature? I'll find out. So that is extremely warped from fire. All right, so despite what this thing said when it was right here, at this level of the tent, we definitely got below freezing. Look at the ice in the frying pan. And that wasn't even on the floor. It was sitting right on this shelf. So we got below freezing at my head level, as you can see. Now that I've risen this thing back up here and the fire's going a little bit, we're at 38. So from the footage, it appears I slept about five hours or so on and off. And I woke up a couple times to get the fire. I just checked. Right now, outside, it is 22 degrees. It is quarter of nine in the morning. I don't know how cold it may have got because it is definitely rising again since it is sunny out and the sun has been up now for almost three hours and today's high temperature is only going to be 27 degrees not getting above freezing like yesterday yesterday was pretty warm there's a crow outside tomorrow's supposed to be warm again like yesterday so we will have more melting tomorrow no more melting will take place today the fire's not going awesome yet but it will be soon just this little bit of flame has already got the tent back up to about 42 degrees, and we are steadily climbing. This is already warm to the touch. Just like I told you, as soon as the sun came up, I would be able to show you spark holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Fire going really hot again, and now the temperature in here has now got back up to around 70. So I just went and online and I bought a spark arrestor for this thing here. I thought that may have been a bad idea because it may have clogged up with soot after a while. But no, I think it'll work because this thing is burning so hot. I don't think it'll ever clog up. There's such a strong draft. It's like a rocket stove. And that's why sparks are getting pushed up it so fast. I don't know why the stove doesn't come with that in the first place if it's meant to be used in a tent like this. I don't know. Well, anyways, the cap it came with, I guess I'm no longer going to use. And I just bought one that will fit this size camping pipe. It's a screen with another screen tightly together. So there's, it's supposed to catch the spark. All right, the fire's going pretty good now. Um, I got to go outside for a bathroom break. Yep, look at this. The snow was so soft yesterday. Now we got a hard crust on it because it got down below freezing again it feels really chilly out compared to yesterday coming back to the tent not burning clean yet still hasn't got up to temp it looks like All right, everyone, we really don't need that light anymore, but right now we've climbed back up to 78 degrees. And for breakfast, we have one more MRE. So this is a Russian one I bought about a year and a half ago, back when you could still get them. You can't get them anymore for obvious reasons. This, These have always been the more expensive ones. This box right here I think was $30 or something. But now if you want to get one from a third party... Like on eBay or something, you're going to pay hundreds because they're in demand since you can't get them anymore. I'm going to translate this whole list of stuff for you so you can take a look at what's in it. And we're going to open it up. I love how these come in a nice box. It's in a Mylar bag, which will last forever. Always in such a neat box. And you got so much stuff in there. So in here we got fuel tablets and a tiny little stove that you could open up. Got a whole bunch of crackers. These are the more dense ones. Not as good as those ones we had in the green meal yesterday. But still very good crackers. Right here we have coffee. More coffee. This is tea. Right here we got sugar. It actually says sugar. That's good. And you don't have to translate it like the outside of the box. A lot of times the outside of these foreign MREs, it's an actual packaging that their military would use. But a lot of times they actually translate certain things inside it. I have to translate this. I will put that on the screen, whatever this is. Now, it's said on the outside of the box what these were, but I have to translate them so I know what they are. Look, those are big portions. That's good. I will translate. No, I don't have to. This is definitely chocolate. I can feel it. Got some spoons for the day. Right here, feels like nuts. I'm going to translate that one. Translate this. Translate this right here. I'm going to translate this one. This is actually the biggest ration I think I ever bought. I've done reviews on a lot of other ones, but... This is, um, because of the picture, I'm imagining is some sort of drink mix that we can try. Another pack of crackers. Another drink mix. Another meal. So yes, this thing is definitely your whole day's worth. There's three meals in this. 
And this, I'm imagining, is hand sanitizer, I assume. This is, I'm thinking, jelly. This is, is that hot pepper, maybe? Because of the picture. Right here is... I think creamer packets, I'm assuming, for the coffee. Got one knife. And this is probably the nutrition facts, along with one napkin or toilet paper you could use it for. It's been so long since I bought this ration, I didn't realize it was a whole day's worth. I should have known by the size of the box, though. Well, because of that, I'm going to go get another bundle of firewood after breakfast. And I think I'm going to stay out here until this evening. What's really awesome about these packages, they're meant to go on top of that little tiny stove it came with, with the fuel tablets. So this container, we can put it right on top of our stove and cook them up like that. Just make sure the top is cracked so it doesn't explode. And make sure you're stirring it or the bottom is probably going to burn. Alright everyone, here's that Irish cream instant cappuccino from yesterday. See, it's a Ziploc bag. So we're going to go ahead and pour water in it, zip it back up, and shake a whole bunch. It says you can put hot or cold in there, put it up to around the line, over it will be diluted, below it will be very strong, it's up to you. Shake it back and forth a good amount like this. Wow, I can already smell the coffee somehow through the bag. Awesome. I know it's probably going to be a little bit too hot for me, but... Wow, that's awesome. The creamer, everything's in there. Let's give it a shot. Just has to cool a little, not as hot as I thought. But that is awesome. That's really good. What I'm having now is meat with beans and vegetables. And this is vegetable caviar. I just have to keep it stirring so I don't burn it. These are going to heat up very fast. Tastes really good, making the whole tent smell like good food. This is a quality meal. This is going to be so good, and I'm about to start boiling some more water so I can have some of the Russian tea. Almost done heating up. It's lukewarm. This stove is awesome. Less than five minutes, these will be fully heated to the extent where I have to let them cool. That just tastes like squash, which is really good. Sweet squash. All right, everyone, so this is that peach drink. It has not completely dissolved yet, meaning the flavor is gonna get better. But as of right now, it's a little bit bland. When it dissolves, if the flavor's not any better, I might actually put both packets of it in here. And this is gonna be my tea. Both of these are now fully heated. As you can see, I ate a lot of this one before I even took it off the stove. It's really good. It's really good chili. Really good and sweet now with both of them. Ooh, you heard that? There's a woodpecker out there. I've been hearing him on and off all morning. He doesn't peck much. That's why I haven't bothered trying to record it. Let that cool for a minute. There's what the gum looks like. Gotta be careful because this peach drink looks just like the pea bottle. I'm getting hungry again, so I'm gonna have one of these. They're both beef with buckwheat. And I'm very curious to know what the ground sausage looks like. I'm imagining it's meant to put on crackers, and I'm also imagining it's fully cooked. But I want to see... This is cheese for the crackers. 
I don't really want that at the moment. So anything I'm not going to eat right now, I'm putting back in the box. I will have a cup of coffee once I'm done drinking the tea. And we can try that chocolate out. I'm very curious to know what this seasoning spread looks like. I might use that on my food. Neat, just neatly put everything I'm not going to use at the moment back in the box. My tea is finally cool enough to take a sip. The pan is a little hot on my lips though. I love this tea, it's really good. Anytime in the past, I've always loved the Russian tea that comes in these. And that's a lot of sugar. They gave us a lot of sugar packets. Big ones. Just went for another bathroom break. Look at that, we are burning perfectly clean again. Absolutely no smoke. This chocolate looks like it's gonna be good. All right, for safety reasons, that has been boiling for a while, the stream water. I'm saving the tea bag because I might want more tea and I don't want to waste the other tea bag because I can get a couple cups out of that. Got our instant coffee creamer now because i have it i'm gonna use it but normally when i make coffee i don't even use sugar just creamer but because i have it i'm gonna use it yeah that, that's so bad for me i usually don't even use it and i was thinking now maybe i i might want some mocha coffee maybe i could put some of the chocolate bar in here that might be pretty good Yeah, let's put uh, one of these pieces of chocolate in there, melt that down, make some mocha coffee. Hear that? In the background, it sounds like coyotes may be fighting, even though it's daytime. It's coffee time. Yep cool enough for me to comfortably drink. That's very chocolatey. Look at that. So the chocolate did not dissolve in here as perfectly as I wanted, but that's okay. I'm just going to have to clean up a little more in the stream in a minute. Wow, I'm glad I didn't put more than two squares of chocolate in there. That's extremely strong. When you're camping, anytime you have trouble getting something off of a pan and you need a scrubber, just throw sediment or sand in there and that works as a good scrub. Rinse it out, fill it back up with water and boil. So now that we're all the way to the afternoon hours of the next day, I absolutely love this little stove. This thing is awesome. It works like a rocket stove. It cooks faster than any other wood stove I've ever used. That's the upside to it. So it's great for summer camps. It's great for winter camping if you have a good sleeping bag. But if you're using this to make sure your tent stays warm throughout the entire night, you're going to want a bigger firebox like the stove I usually use. And look at this, we melted the whole ground around it to the point I had to shim the back of it because the ground is absolutely not straight at all now that the snow is melting. So right here, that water is done boiling. So we're going to go ahead and take that off. And we're going to make some tea. I'm not going to put sugar in it this time. All right, here's what translated as ground meat. That looks like a pate, so yeah, that's most likely for the crackers. You could heat it up if you want. I'm gonna do it. Now right here is the beef with buckwheat. This, you can see, has a lot of lard, fat, whatever you wanna call it, which is great for, for uh, survival. Gives you a lot of energy in, uh, what do you call it? The buckwheat is starting to smell pretty good. You see, it's starting to loosen up now that we're heating it up. Because remember, it was really cold last night. 
it's kind of hard not to spill a little bit stirring it in here because I'm stirring it pretty vigorously so it doesn't burn. Back here, we're going to give that a flip. And then I'm just going to eat that right there with the fork, not even with the crackers. I'm going to save all the crackers. And the last meal, which is also buckwheat, I'm going to save that for another time. I'm going to save the cheese. I might try opening the seasoning packet to see what it is. Maybe put it on this to make the food taste a little better. But we are almost heated up. It's ketchup. Now that everything has cooled, I can pick the container up comfortably. I put the ketchup in the buckwheat. Buckwheat is very good, but it's also a little bit bland. So the ketchup being mixed in there adds a little bit of flavor. Might actually add some pepper. We got a lot of that. Buckwheat is kind of similar to rice, in my opinion. Let's try that pate block. See what's going on with that. Smells similar to potted meat. Should be good that we heated it up. I'm pretty sure this was intended for the crackers along with the cheese. Yeah, it's basically potted meat. Tastes similar to Vienna sausage. I really don't like the texture of pate, but the flavor's not bad at all. I'm going to go ahead and eat it all. I guess you could say it's similar to ham also. Alright, so the tea last night was really good the second time. This was very bland the second time. Didn't really work for seconds. So I'm going to have one more pan of coffee, and then I think we're out of here. I don't need another bundle of firewood. I'm going to burn what we have so I don't have to lug it back. Then I'm going to start cleaning up camp. I have one more meal in here. I will save this for another time. Or just some snack at some point. The heating element in there, the fuel tabs and little stove, I'll just put that in storage for someday. It looks like, is that a water skimmer that we awoke from hibernation? I wasn't going to trust that water bottle all night, but that's only there so I can burn that one piece of wood. Look inside, you see all that smoke? But yet, somehow, that smoke is being burned up before it leaves. Look. Burning perfectly clean outside. Somehow, the hot pipe is acting like a catalytic converter. Some coffee. And some creamer. Once we throw that wood in, I say we have another hour before this thing burns out and is cold enough to pick up. Believe it or not, this door is stopping a lot of heat. Having it open, it radiates so much more that in within 30 seconds, I'm burning through my boot. Not literally, but my skin feels like it's burning from the heat. That's our last piece of wood. This thing is now burning pretty hot. This thing should be completely burning in about an hour or so, and we're gonna start cleaning up camp. It is currently 90 degrees in here hot enough I took my jacket back off let's clean the frying pan clean the forks brush my teeth one more time hang out until this is done and start packing up because it got cold out again 
and everything in the area stopped melting, the stream noticeably dropped since the temperatures have dropped because it stopped melting. Now there's even more of a noticeable air gap underneath it. Also, from me producing heat in here all night, this feels kind of compromised. It could collapse, but I'm only gonna fall about five inches, and with my boots, I'm not gonna get wet unless I'm kneeling like this. You see, the ice, you can see, is compromised just by how it looks. It's kind of like crystallizing where it could fail. But right here, pretty solid as we head outside. And this is the snow we picked up last night, only about a quarter of an inch. The sun is so bright, that's also helping us heat up this place. So now it is time to do dishes. Let these soak for a minute while I brush my teeth. Now that we're all done using the stream, I'm just wondering how much I'd have to do to break this ice. It doesn't seem like much. I think I can break it pretty easily. Yeah, look, it already cracked around the edge. It took more than I thought, and it also fell less than I thought. Now, by breaking it, it's possible that this is now going to cause an ice jam, and it's going to back up slightly, maybe. Maybe even going over the ice downstream. I just put a good amount of that box in there. Even some of it was wet. And I put it in there. I don't understand how this thing is burning so clean. No smoke. I guess it's just because the pipe is so hot. It's starting to cool down in here. And remember that ice I broke? That was nearly 40 minutes ago. And suddenly one of those pieces of ice just started moving banging against the underside it was pretty loud and scary the sunshine is so bright outside we are really cooling down as far as the stove still scalding hot i would say this thing will probably be cold enough to touch maybe 30 minutes or so let's spread it around help it cool down one thing I always worry about with these hot tents is if this ever touches that pipe, it's going to melt severely. Only that little silver square is what's heat proof. So for upcoming videos, you can get it from the plumbing section of any hardware store. I'm going to get this rock wool plumbing sleeve. It's completely fireproof and I'm going to put it around the pipe when it goes through that. And that should help out a lot. As you can see, we've burned out almost every coal in there. Despite that, still very hot a lot of heat still coming off that little bit but as i shake it around everything burned is going through so i can just pull out the ashtray when i'm done and remember i mentioned to you that the bottom is a little warped i'm pretty sure i can bend that back with my bare hands the metal's not very thick reason it bent in the first place entire camping stove supposedly is only 14 pounds all right there's barely any hot coals in this thing left Cannot touch the stove yet, but I can touch the pipe. So I'm going to start disassembling it now. Starting with this. Like that. As soon as the stove cools down, I will go ahead and put this stuff inside it right after I dump it out. The pipes that are a little bit different are a little harder to pull apart. And they don't retain heat nearly as much because they are thinner. I don't even know if I can get that one apart. Ah, oh, that one's really stuck. It's moving a little bit. That's really in there. There we go. 
So up towards the top, despite being so hot, there is very little creosote buildup in there. A lot of that will probably come off just by banging it around. All right. And by next time we use this, I should have the new chimney cap, which is whole thing is a double screen, like window screen, one outside the other. It should catch any sparks so we don't make this problem worse. It is time to move everything out of the tent and take the tent down. This thing is still hot to touch. Well, I can touch it for like five seconds before it gets too hot. Just pick it up like this to bring it outside and dump it. Wow, the ash pan is actually full. Still kind of hot. Open it up, shake it out a whole bunch. I guess you can't fix that, and that's kind of preventing the pipes from going in here good. I finally got everything to fit well. If you remember, these pipes don't go with it. I just wanted the stack to be higher. Except going back once to get firewood, I have been out here now for exactly 24 hours. So inside here, compared to outside, we melted so much snow on the ground in every part of this. Melted a good amount here with the stove. Compared to outside, the snow is soft in here again. Not crunchy. All right, let's take the tent down. All set, got it back in the bag pretty neatly. All right, it is about 3 p.m. in the afternoon and this time of winter, it'll be dark in about two hours or so. Got everything cleaned up, and the only thing we left behind was some broken ice, some ash, that's it. All garbage is being taken out with us, and I hope today's video was interesting, everyone. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and tell me what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. A couple clicks of a mile downstream at the miniature dam we have got ourselves some squirrel tracks in the very fresh snow look at what I just found near the house you know what this is mice have underground tunnels right here where I snow blowed they can't make a tunnel because there's not enough snow so from here look at those little tunnels they're coming out 
crossing the trail and they're going back in. The mice have a network of underground tunnels. Keeps them away from the elements, just like an igloo. It's actually warmer because it's insulated underneath all that snow. Mice are traveling beneath our feet and we don't even know it.